From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. As always, we are so happy that we can be with you to discuss some of the things that are going on in the world in the light of what God has to say about it, because Jack will be quoting the Bible to us uh, all through this program. My first headline, you don't neutralize terror, you crush it. Oh, I like that headline. You can't just neutralize what somebody's doing when they're killing people. Then going on, where the rubble speaks. That moves my heart so much. There's rubble around the world where the terrorists have gone and killed people, destroyed homes. And again, we'll be discussing that. And Brexit quake reaches the United States. What's happening in Great Britain is reaching a lot of areas in the world and right here in the United States. And speaking of the United States, We'll never forget the terror attack on 9-11 where 3,000 of our fellow Americans were killed. I'll never forget it. Nolan Finley referred to this and my oh my what he had to say and there he is on the screen is very, very good. I like what he said. I always thought the best way to honor the 3,000 who were murdered would be to drop 3,000 bombs on their murderers. We ask our troops to win hearts and minds by sorting out the good guys from the bad while bullets are flying. In the process, we've given our tormentors another 6,200 victims. Now this goes back a good way, so a lot more than that now. So maybe we should leave now. And as we go, nail a note on the door that says, don't make us come back here, because if we do, will flatten your miserable countries and everybody Amen. in them. Then going on, Barack Marzell, you don't neutralize terror, you crush it. Now he was blasting what he called the government's passive approach to terrorism. You can't just neutralize them. You do have to do away with them. And this next one really breaks my heart because it seems like the terrorism never stops. The world mourns so much for all of those, Jack. And if you would please read where all of those terroristic acts took place. Oh, Rexella, this is terrible. All this killing by this group called ISIS. Right now, NATO is going to try to go down where they're located and smash them, and I hope they do. That's what they deserve. Nothing but a bunch of brute beasts, Jude 110. All they want to do is kill, 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 Sharia law. And they call it religion. They call it a religion of peace. Even the Pope has said that about him. What a lie. God is going to show me. He's called me a week ago to be a prophet for these end times. And the end times are here. We're going to be going home shortly. But there's going to be more killing by these brutal beasts. You know what Jesus called them in Matthew 23, verse 33? He said, you serpents, you bunch of snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? They're going to be in the hottest part of hell. And you know, Khalid, Sheikh Mohammed said as the mastermind of 9-11, and you heard what Nolan Finley said, yes. bomb all of them. He said, I knew the guys, I set it up. And they believed that they'd get 72 virgins, so they went to all the great perfume stores and loaded everything with their bodies. Boy, I bet it smells good in hell right now where these criminals are, and that's what they are, and I'm not gonna be nice about it. Now, listen to what they've done. 84, dead in Nice, 281 dead in Baghdad, oh. 49 dead in Orlando, 72 dead in Lahore, 35 dead in Brussels, Belgium, where my relatives are, 18 dead in Grand Bassam, 12 dead in Jakarta, 45 dead in Istanbul, 14 dead in San Bernardino, 130 dead in Paris, 103 dead in Ankara, 145 dead in Majorajji, and 38 dead in Susa, 
38 dead in Tunis, 17 dead again in Paris a second time, 2 dead in Sydney, 224 dead in Egypt, 137 dead in Yemen. Boy, hell's going to be hot for you dirty, rotten hypocrites. And I, let me tell you what it's like, okay? Luke 16, 23, in hell the rich man lift up his eyes, being in torments. And he see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in his flame. Abraham said, forget it. And I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be a horrible day in hell or it is already, because that's where they are. There is no heaven with 72 virgins. My God never allows his heaven to become a whorehouse, which this crowd is trying to create. Oh, Jack, it's so very, very sad. Well, God condemns killing. It's so wonderful to know that Christians go by the, the Judeo-Christian ethics. The Ten Commandments, and I've often said this on our program, they're not Ten Suggestions. There are Ten Commandments, and one of them, Thou shalt not kill. God says that. We need to take it to heart. Well, now, let's Jack, go a little farther, Yes, Rexella. Jack. When they do kill, all you have to do is turn the page because we've got a pope now who says, Oh, we've got to do away with uh, all this killing, capital punishment. Baloney! Rexella just quoted... Exodus 20, 13, thou shalt not kill. Turn the page, 21, 12. He that smites a man shall be put to death. Plain enough. Leviticus 24, 17. He that kills any man shall surely be put to death. That's where they belong. Nolan Finley of the Detroit News, you said, bomb all 3,000 of them. And I say, go get it, man. All right, Jack. Well, you know, you referred just now to what the Pope had to say that... Uh, the Islamic religion is a religion of peace. And uh, this is quite a statement, and I think, Jack, you would love to read this, if you will, please. Sabotaging its miserable house. Oh, wow. And as I've said, when I talk about this pope, I get the Vatican Magazine and many others, and many of the clergy are really disturbed with what this pope is doing because the prophecy of the one who would become number 113 of the popes is the one who'd bring the Catholic Church into disrepute and destroy it, and he's doing it. Now listen to this. The most audacious recent move in this great game of strategy is the offers by Al-Azhar, Islam's most important university. To renew relations with the Vatican, Relations were broken off when Pope Benedict XVI denounced the bombing of a church in Alexandria, Egypt, the Christians. In overture to Pope Francis, the Grand Ayman of Al-Azhar said that relations could be resumed if in one of the Pope's addresses he were to declare that Islam is a peaceful religion. Oh. Guess what? Islam seems to have had success with the Pope. Pope Francis, in his first apostolic exhortation, Evangeli Gaudium, asserted that authentic Islam and the proper reading of the Quran are opposed to every form of violence. Everything about the Quran talks about killing, killing, killing. And I'm not going to pull any punches for anyone. All right. Mr. Pope, get your Bible, the Roman Catholic Bible, the Doi Reims version, and find out what it teaches so you'll know what you're talking about. Well, Jack, you know, it's just the opposite. It is just the opposite. And I would like to see, uh, for you to see why I'm saying this. Take a look at this. This breaks my heart. Where the rubble speaks. It speaks about it two years after genocide. Yazidis are losing hope of returning to their homeland. Now, that is in Iraq. Oh, this young woman, 23 years old, Yazidi, she had 18 members of her family killed. She was uh, kidnapped and raped. Oh, my. She even said, I wanted to die. I even wanted them to kill me. I didn't want to keep going through this. But thank God she escaped and she spoke before the United Nations. ISIS cruelty. And then Lahore, man had arms chopped off after refusing to convert to Islam. All right, wear a headscarf or be what? Raped. Swedish woman warned. 
Oh, my. In other words, <laughs> we're going to take it out on you if you don't even wear our headscarf. They're even sex maniacs, all of them. Here we are. An Iraqi man examines the remains of Zizis at a mass grave near the village of Sinai, northwest of Sinjar. Now, you know, that is so, so sad because there are many, many hundreds probably buried there. Oh, my. That's their now, skulls. Jack, I'd like for you also, if you would like to, to see why they're doing this. Because the Quran, this is from the Quran, yeah. speaks about killing. Will yeah. you read it, please? And the Word of God tells us that this sect at the end of time, just before Jesus returns, will be practicing Revelation 20, verse 4. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Do you know in Saudi Arabia, every Saturday, they have games, and then they take time to show all the people who come from uh, homes in Syria, oh. how they cut their heads off. Now, here it is on the screen. Seize them and kill them. Unbelievers, wherever you find them, Surah 489. Strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of God and your enemies and others, Surah 860. When the sacred months are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them, arrest them, besiege them, and lie in ambush everywhere for them, Surah 9.5. Believers, make war on the infidels who dwell among you. Deal firmly with them, Surah 9.123. If you encounter in war those who disbelieve, you may strike off their necks, Surah 47.4. When you encounter the infidels, strike off their heads, Surah 47.4. And the infidels are the Christians and the Jews, and according to Mark Gabriel, the great leader at Egyptian school and who has now been saved said they have cut off the heads of 300 million Christians. The religion of peace. Are you surprised, Pope Francis? Oh, Jack, it is so wonderful to know that the Lord is with those people. He's sustaining them no matter what they are going through. How wonderful it is that they have their faith in Jesus Christ and they know that when they give their life for him, they're going to be with him in heaven. Oh, my. Well, you know, uh, we're winding, not only winding this up, let me take that back, but this is our final week for this wonderful offer. Startling end time prophecies, Pope Francis and Christ. Oh, return. I love that part, Christ's return. Take a look, please, at the promo. Startling end time prophecies. Pope Francis and Christ's return is the most amazing and astonishing study Dr. Vanipi has ever prepared. It's about to happen and coincides with Christ's return. It's spine tingling, as you will discover, when listening to Catholic theologians, bishops, cardinals, and popes describing this greatest event in history. Bishop Sheen, the earliest television minister, proclaimed the message globally and stated the defector would be a cardinal of the church. Pope John Paul II paid a great price in denouncing this coming false prophet and chose 31 new cardinals, true to God's word, to attempt to keep the false prophet from coming to power. Nevertheless, Pope number 113 was elected in 2013 and took upon him the name of Saint Francis. Dr. Van Epi has studied and watched every statement Pope Francis has made to date and discovered 10 destructive errors he has promoted against his church. Saint Peter, the first pope, warned that the final leader of the church would bring forth damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus. Want the answers and proof? Order startling end time prophecies. Pope Francis and Christ's return. Oh, friends, last week, last week, please don't put this off. In fact, you know what? Will this current pope be the last one? And will he destroy the church? Jack goes into great detail here. And with a special donation, you can also receive The Final Three Popes by Jack Van Hippie. It is a great book. So there's the 800 number and there's the address. Make the call right away. We'll get this in the mail the last week. So please don't put it off. Well, the world is still focused, if you know, on what Britain has done. Just split its ties with the world's biggest market, the EU. Whoa, here you see it. Britain's big mess, how Brexit will affect the UK, the EU, and what? 
the world. Wow. There you go. And the United Kingdom, a nation revolts against the elite. Again, coming apart, the decline of the European Union. Well, we're going to focus on that, believe me, in just a moment. Brexit quake reaches the United States. Americans say Britain's split from the EU reflects anger that smolters in the USA, too. And here you see another one, disappointed remain activists in London. Oh, my word. The Brexit earthquake shakes the world, and I think that everybody is talking about it. Well, somebody that really is talking about it is, of course, Putin of Russia. He is really concerned, and look why. Kremlin gets flashback of Soviet collapse in Brexit fallout. What? Flashback of Soviet collapse? There's a big upheaval in the UK, and he's concerned about it. Time magazine, the imperialist Vladimir Putin, the Russian uh, increasingly isolated president, is on a mission to restore his country's lost empire. He wants to build it again. He wants to be number one in the world. What does Putin want? All right, not money, not power, not territory or revenge. The Russian strongman is after bigger game, believe me. And I'm going to go to Jack in just a moment, and I'm going to ask him, really, what does President Putin want? If he doesn't want money and, and gain and all the rest, or even revenge, what does he want? Jack, what is Putin really after? Rexella, there's a prophecy in this Bible that's over 2,500 years old, and it's about the last great war, Armageddon, which will be headed up by a nation called Russia. And for years, the Soviet Socialist Republic was powerful, and now they have lost it. And Putin says, I'm going to regain it, and he's going to do everything he can to get it back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it was in 1713 that Bishop Lowthy said there's going to be a great war, and the nation heading it up will be called Rosh or Versia in Greek or Russia in English. That's 303 years ago he said it, but the prophecy was 2,500 years old. Oh, this is exciting. This is the greatest prophecy in history, and it couldn't happen because these nations weren't in existence anymore, but now they are. There was no Israel for 2,000 years, but it's there now, and they play a great part. Let's see what it is. The Bible teaches in Daniel chapter 2, verses 40, 41, and 44, and chapter 7, verses 7 and 20, and in Revelation 12, 13, and 17, that there would be 10 nations coming together for the new world order. And who were they? Here they are. Oh, this is exciting. 1947, they had Benelux join, and that's Belgium, the Netherlands, which is Holland, and Luxembourg. Then in 1973, England, where all the problem has just been, and of course, Ireland with them. And then in 81, number 10, Greece, the ten toes of Daniel's image. It was here. People said Jesus could come at any time, but it grew to 28 nations. So they got together and re-established everything, and they've created a 10-nation world order. Oh, Jack, I've got the 10-division world uh, empire in front of me here, and I'm going to put it on the screen in just a moment. But let's deal with a few nations that are lining up together right now for that world empire. Russia, Brussels, at NATO expansion in Eastern Europe. Well, Russia's called NATO's move a threat to the stability of Europe. Moscow turns to Southeast Asia for new allies. Well, you know, they've been buddies for a That's long time. That's China. Yes, absolutely. Russia and China together. European super state to be unveiled. EU nations to be morphed into one post-Brexit. Can you believe that? And then going on, ISIS amassing an army on Europe's border. Again, no wonder they're very concerned about that. The EU Foreign Affairs Minister, Europe needs an EU army. Well, here's something. Relax. 
Brexit isn't the end of, okay, the new world order. And here's why. And here we are. Yes, I'm going to put this on the screen right now. The 10 division world empire. Oh my, oh my. Look how they've done this. It's amazing. Well, America's first here. Number one, America, Canada, and Mexico. Number two, South America. Number three, Australia and New Zealand. Four, Western Europe, Eastern Europe five, Japan six, South Asia seven, Central Asia eight, nine, North Africa and the Middle East, and ten, the remainder of Africa. Well, do you see what that uh, headline said? World empire it includes the whole world. We're included. So is Russia, and she's very, very uh, concerned that she wants to be the number one power in this world. So she's raising her fist right now and saying, China, join with me. We want to take over. Jack, do, is, does Russia really want to take over, do you think? Oh, and they are going to, Rex. Yes. It's going to become the mightiest power in the world once again very soon. Sad to say. But in Ezekiel 38 and 39, we have the whole picture. It says, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. All right. Gog is the end time ruler, which probably could be Putin. And then the Scythians became the Megagites, and then called Russians. Meshach is Moscow, Tobol is Tobolsk, southwest of Siberia. So it's all there in Russia. And they call for help. And that's China, Revelation 16, 12, who comes down. And that's Daniel 11, 44. The North, Russia, and the East, China getting together for one of the greatest and most powerful armies in history. Then in Ezekiel 38, 5, you have Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Lebanon, and you have Tagarma. That's Turkey, where the problem is right now. Who will go along with them? All part of the 10 World Foundation. Man, Jesus is about to come. Now, here's why it will be in our lifetime. First of all, they invade Israel. The whole war is fought as they move down to that country. There was no Israel to invade till 1948. What? The Romans took the Jews out of there in 70 AD, and 2,000 years passed. And they raised their flag in 48, saying, this is the six-pointed star of David, and we're Israel, and we're back. There's one more thing. They have to be in control of Jerusalem, and that has happened, and that's what all the fuss is about. So we are ready for the greatest war in history, and it's all happened just in the last few years. It only started, according to Bishop Lowdy of London, England, when he said it's coming and said it 303 years ago. Wow. We've lived to see that things form. Now, Israel is the point, yes. Are you listening? Chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. 18 times, and they're here! <laughs> and there can't be a war there with Russia until they were there fighting over Jerusalem with the Palestinians. It's still here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man, Jesus is about to break to the blue. We need to get ready. We need to get saved. It's going to be an atomic war. Look it up. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, and Revelation 9, 18. By these three was the third part of men slain. Fire, smoke brimstone atomic war no wonder that recently on the show where our lieutenant general flynn was present he said i'm afraid because they're going to get chemicals and atom weapons they can get them from pakistan right now they've got them as a muslim nation well jack you know what surely the bible teaches we're right in the brink of armageddon it's coming very soon, and all this terrorism and so many things going on point to that, and it's going to happen. But Jesus is coming back. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And but, to stop it, honey. Yes, to stop it, absolutely. But are you ready? I want to ask you a personal question. If Jesus came today, would you be ready? Have you opened your heart to the Lord? Have you asked him to be your savior? If you haven't, please recognize he's the only way to heaven. And that if you will open your heart to Jesus and say, I receive you, you'll be ready. Pray this prayer with Jack as he gives us wonderful, wonderful prayer of acceptance. Jack. Pope Francis said the blood of Christ will save everyone. Yeah, if you accept it. Otherwise, it won't. As many as receive Christ, to them gave God the power to become sons and daughters. John 1, 12. Will you receive him right now? Look at me. Do you see Jesus on that cross? That blood is being shed for you to wipe away every sin you've ever committed. Now just look and say, Jesus, thank you. I trust in the merits of your holy blood shed for my sin to save me today. And I receive you in the heart, my heart, precious Savior. Amen. Mm. This is why we come into your home to give you the opportunity to open your heart to the Lord. I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack just now. If you did, will you write to me? There's my address, and I'm going to send you this wonderful little book, First Steps in a New Direction. You know, we need to be walking with the Lord today. We don't need to be doing things that grieve him or hurt him. We need to walk with him. And one day he's coming soon, we'll know that we are ready. Oh, please, let me know about your acceptance of Christ. And now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive this wonderful offer about Pope Francis and Christ's return. And it is the last week, friends. Don't put it off. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order startling end-time prophecies, Pope Francis and Christ's return. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Eppe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Eppe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Last chance, call today. Thank you, Chuck, and you can receive Jack's wonderful book with a special donation. Make the call, there's the 800 number, and there's the address, don't miss it, last week. Hey, do you want to accomplish something? I want to leave you with this thought. You can accomplish more in one hour with God than a lifetime without Him. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week, and until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.